what is going on everybody welcome to or back to the channel hopefully it's back to the channel hopefully you've watched my content before if you don't you need to start make sure you hit that subscribe button I'm trying to increase this channel so today we're going to be working on my super glide i was able to pick up some um some pegs for it some rear passenger mounts because the super glide is basically a base harley davidson it did not come with rear passenger pegs and I got to get some pegs on there so me and Miss Ryder can go on some rides. I got some off Marketplace for an amazing deal. I'm going to show you all what I ended up picking up. But we're going to get these on here. I heard the job is a nightmare, but I'm going to see if I can find a way to make it easier, which I'm sure I'm going to get angry because every time I work on my bike, I get angry. And if you're working on your bike and you're not getting angry, you're not doing something right. But let's get it going. Okay, so this is what I was able to pick up off of Marketplace. Got an amazing deal on it. I paid $70 and I ended up getting the rear mounts, which are these, and it actually came with some flow pegs. And I picked up some flow pegs for the front as well. So I'm definitely excited about this. The Super Glide didn't come with passenger pegs. So I gotta get these on here so me and Miss Ryder could go for a ride. We're about, almost hit myself in the head. We're about to go ahead and try to put these on real quick. So I'm not sure how well this is picking up on camera, but this right here is my actual um, fender. And this right here are plugs that you have to remove. And this is where the mount is actually gonna go. So Sean at Speedway Harley Davidson told me to tape off my fender so that that way I don't end up destroying it because getting the bolt in right here is gonna be hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some tape on that. All I've got laying around is this masking tape. Hopefully it does the job. This is some bullshit. I don't have no more blue tape left. I know that. All right, let's try to get it. This tape is trash, y'all. I think I got this from like Harbor Freight or something. This is, this is strictly to prevent scratching up my fender. I'm gonna put a few layers just to be extra safe here. Okay, I'm gonna assume that's enough layers. So now let's get this out. This is basically just a plastic plug that's in there. Look what I found. I found the blue tape. I'm gonna put a little bit of that on there. I'm being over cautious. Nothing wrong with being extra careful versus not careful enough. I got to try to get these two little plastic grommets out. I used to have some tools some plastic tools to pull them off, but I don't anymore. So I'm going to use what I got. I found this paint can opener and I'm going to hope it works. Okay, just pry it up some. That actually worked miracle. So you don't always gotta have the right tool for the job. You just have to have a tool for the job. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's do this one. And for those that partake in tree substances, I'm sure y'all nails are a little bit longer, like Snoop Dogg, for instance. So it's easier for y'all to get y'all nailed up under here. Mine's is cut right now. Almost got it. I think we got it. Huh. <sighs> got it both of them are out this one has a little bit of rust in the hole so you're actually going to need to pick up these screws right here to be able to do it because there's no screws on this side and as you can see um it says 4059 i don't know if that's the part number or some of these other numbers on here but you can take a screenshot of that if you need to get screws for this they already come with some blue loctite on them i'm gonna just check first to see if they go in easy It looks like they spin in quite easy. At least that one. The side with the rust on it might be a little bit different. Okay, that side is going in fairly easy as well. I also picked this up from Advanced Hardware. I caught it on sale for I think $7 because I need this tool. I actually had this size on a ratchet but you can't get a ratchet in here because of how close the fender is to that so hopefully this makes the job a little bit easier and this is just a t45 allen but i had to buy the whole kit to get it so this side is the side they said at the dealership that's the hardest so let's see if they were right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna line this up 
and start the screws and then I'll um, screw it in. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this process. Let's get that screw going. Try to get it at least started. Okay, I've got that one started. So now let's do the other side. And the key is to just take your time. Most likely you're gonna come across complications, everyone does, especially me. And that's when I gotta put a whole bunch of beeps in the video because I start cussing my bike out. It ain't the bike's fault, it ain't. It's technically my fault for not knowing what I'm doing here. But you don't gotta know what you're doing to be able to do things. Yeah, that's what you gotta say to yourself. All right, so I got that one started and that one started. Now let's hope this tool saves me a headache. I can get it right there. Yep, it is not even touching the fender. It's gonna take a lot longer because it's not ratcheting, but it's better than risking your fender experiencing some serious damage. All right, there you go. Now you've got my angle. feel like that one's getting snug too soon. So I feel like I'm gonna have to spray a little something in there. It don't have to be a lot. Yeah. This is the part that sucks. You gotta start over now. And I lost a little of my blue Loctite, but I can see the rust on here. So I'm gonna have to lube that. That's just a little bit of lube. Get a little in there. Don't need a lot, just enough. All right, I added a little bit more blue Loctite on there too. I'll try to get it down as far as I can by hand first. There we go. Felt the catch. Much better. It's going in a lot easier. And the blue Loctite, don't worry about the penetrating oil. The blue Loctite will make it lock up. It still is not the easiest thing to do, especially with a tool like this, but this tool made it a whole lot easier than using a ratchet. And just rotate back and forth so you get them on evenly tight. And as far as how tight to get it on there, I say snug as hell. There we go. Let's do this side. Whew. there we go. So this side is done. Now, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this extension arm because it's stupid and it looks stupid and I don't want this extension on here. So it looks like that's a standard Allen that I'm gonna have to get out to get this off and then just mount this directly back to there. Got it. And this right here is a 45T as well that's on here but you probably won't have these on yours. You're probably buying new, you're probably not cheap like me. I gotta get socket on there to hold that. Here we go, got that off. There's also a little clamp in here, this piece that you're not gonna wanna lose. I'm gonna spray it down with some blaster. So I got this little piece cleaned up. I don't know if it's focusing on that, but as you can see, it's cleaned up. What I'm gonna do now is get the peg back on and then I'll adjust how I want it to fit. But you've gotta get this clip in there with the bold edge going towards this. Basically make sure this flat piece rests up in that little crevice. That's usually one of the hardest parts. So I'm gonna get that in there first. Push my peg in. Try not to crush my damn fingers. Just work it in slowly. Take your time. You're in no rush. You're doing it yourself. All right. Now, while you're working it, start feeding that screw through. And as you can see, I've got the screw in now. Right there is the little clip. I've got the screw through and the peg is on here. 
So I'm gonna tighten it and then I'll loosen this and rotate my peg to where I need it to be. And this stock washer already has, it's already a lock nut, so I ain't gonna worry about that. And I am using a T45. That's actually too snug, cause I can't even move it. There we go. And there we go, we got it on. Still move it a little bit. Now I'm gonna loosen this to get this in a good position. Okay, lower it down. All right, so then just play with it. As you can see, you got free motion. Get it to where you feel like it's level. Probably like about there, should be good. And then just snug it back up. That looks good and snug. Now you got free motion to move it up and down. So this side's done. Let's go to the other side. So this side looks a little bit more challenging to me. I've got to loosen this first to be able to swing my belt guard up a little bit and then get these two bolts that are behind the belt guard out. So let's figure out if we can make this happen. So it looks like this is actually a 3 16. So let's see if we can get it loosened. And I heard that sometimes this is extremely tight. Okay, it's not that bad. It's definitely on there though. Finish it out by hand and we got it out. Next step, lift that up and out the way a little. <laughs> it's only so far I can move. I'm gonna need some leverage. So I'm gonna put like a pole or something on this edge to try to torque it out. One way you can do that is by using a wrench. It's not the best way. It's not a smart way either, cause you can slip and really hurt yourself. But let's see if it works. Yep, it worked. I got that one loose. That's in there in a weird spot. All right, so my biggest issue was the camera was in the way, but I got it loose. And you loosen them the same way as you put it on on the other side. So let me get these loose real quick and then I'll check back in. So a lot of time the job difficulty is based off having the right tools. Luckily, I was smart enough to go pick up the right tool this time. And we were able to get them out. So as you can see right here, the left side actually has a place, which is right here, that's going to replace this mount. So that's how you could tell the difference from the two sides. To be completely transparent with y'all, the camera's probably gonna be in my way. It's not a lot of room to work over here. But as you can see, this is how you line it up, right there. And then you just get a screw in there, move the camera. So let's get these back together. You wanna make sure that you can just hand screw it in. That's how you know you're not cross threading. See, I got that one in. And sometimes you gotta finger it a little bit <laughs> just to get <laughs> to get it in there right. All right, come on, you mother. There we go. Somewhere online, I saw that you have to take the whole wheel off to do this, but looks like I'm showing y'all a workaround. It might be harder this way, but it's less time to have to remove your whole rear wheel. All right, now it's feeling kind of snug and you definitely want to get those as tight as you can. My next step is the same process to get rid of this ugly contraption. All right, so I got the peg off. I'm about to actually put it back on. I got my clip cleaned up. So why do I choose to do a lot of stuff like this myself? I bet y'all are wondering that. Or maybe you're not. Maybe you're just like me. I have always been this way for quite some time because I'm struggling to get this thing in here. I ain't gonna even lie. So I did not and still, to this day, I didn't grow up having a lot of money, but I like to have nice things. So I would buy nice things and learn how to fix stuff myself and do things, as many things as I can myself. Like I would, I would literally give anything a try as far as installing something. Because the worst thing that can happen is I don't do it right and then at that point, I'll just get some help from someone, a friend, or then pay someone to do it. But when you're on a budget, like I am, and, and it, another thing, this helps me kind of learn 
a lot of stuff like how to work on my bike and I enjoy learning new things I really do I feel like that's good still got a little play to move it up and down but yeah I'm not afraid to get in here and actually work on my bike because I actually appreciate it more when I do it myself I've learned that versus if someone else does it for me you know I'm still happy with the finished product and everything but there's nothing like being able to do it yourself I got everything on here I just got to put my screw back in real quick so yeah don't be afraid to actually work on your own bike it saves you some money it teaches you a craft too you get frustrated don't get me wrong I'll be in here cussing this bike the hell out because I get frustrated a lot working on my bike but I can actually say the gratitude you receive from doing it yourself is definitely worth it. I gotta put the front pegs on now. Found a leaf. All right, so I'm about to take this off. Look like there's a little lock washer in this on the front. Definitely make sure you do not lose. This one doesn't even have the little clip I need, the little tensioner clip on it. I'm not sure why it didn't have that. So here's my brand new front pegs, Flow Motorsports because that's what the rear ones I bought off um, Facebook Marketplace came with. And of course they got a match. So we got these for the front. Looks like it just comes with the pegs. And of course my favorite thing, stickers. Now before putting these in, I want the clips that go in there. What was originally in there was just this. And I don't know if that's, I'm gonna have to go buy some of the little clips to go right here from Speedway, Harley Davidson, and then I'll get the front ones on a little later. So I ran up to Speedway and I got the good stuff. As you can see, this is just a curved, it's called a spring clip. I was calling it the wrong thing. All right, so I'm gonna try to get this one in here first. I'm gonna tell y'all right now, getting this piece in is not the easiest. There you go. You just gotta keep like rocking it back and forth. Then once you get it close, get that bolt in there. Okay, there we go. We got it through. Then you've got this lock nut washer and this one. Uh, this don't really look like a lock nut, so I'm gonna put a little blue Loctite on it. That's way too much, but it'll do the job. There we go. Now I'm gonna just snug that up. But that should be good for this side. So let's do the other side. Okay, let's get this one loosened up. Let's hope this works. Yep, there we go. I felt it break loose. And then, just gotta get it out. I feel like this should just pop out instead of having to screw all the way out. That's a little weird. And I think on the other side, what I did was I put the spring clip on the back half. Trying to help y'all see this. I'm putting the spring clip right here on the back half. And then got to kind of work this peg in there. Y'all like how I set the mood lighting up? <laughs> but basically, that's it. We got the pegs on. Now we just got to go for a ride. But it's not that difficult to do as long as you got the right tools. The hard part is being patient because you don't want to take forever doing a job like this. But if you try to rush it, you're gonna get frustrated and it's gonna take longer. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, like and comment on this video. Me and Miss Ryder are gonna go out on the bike tomorrow and I will give y'all my initial impressions on if I like these pegs versus the stock ones, which I'm 100% sure I'm going to. And I'll let y'all know how much she hates them because she already said on it and she doesn't know if she's gonna like the spikes, but I like the look of it and she's not on here that much. So, you know, do what you gotta do when it's your bike. Oh yeah, there's one more thing we gotta do. <laughs> all right, I'll see y'all in the next one. Y'all better be subscribed too.